Some of you have been anointed by God. Some of you are anointed to plant in farms. Some of you are anointed to paint and to play music and to sing. Some of you are anointed to sell stuff. Some of you are anointed to manage businesses. You have anointing to bless the world. You know that already. You know that you're supposed to, your anointing is to bless the world, but some of you don't know this. Are you ready? This is big. Your anointing has been given by God so that you can bless the world. But your anointing has also been given by God to prosper you. Did you hear me? That anointing that God has given to you is not only to bless others, but to bless you. And our problem sometimes is we don't understand that, we forget that, and we get distracted. Say distracted. We don't understand. We have to focus on our anointing and grow our anointing through the years. Keep on growing, keep on growing that anointing because that anointing will not only bless the world, it will bless you and prosper you. My sister, her name is Becky. She has an anointing for administrative detail. Light of Jesus family has been on for 30 years. And since the beginning, my sister Becky takes charge of organizing all our events from the very beginning. Not only that, many of the members of Light of Jesus family and all our friends, you know, when they're about to get married, they will say, Becky, can you be our wedding coordinator? And so she would organize the wedding. She, she, she has this knack for detail. She writes everything in little pink cards, orange cards, blue cards, she'd give it to everyone. You know, she'd organize it. She'd give it to a bride, for example. Okay, before the wedding, here it is. Stand at the back of the church. Inhale six times. And then when you hear the sound of the wedding march, take 38 steps. And on, and, and on the sixth step, turn to the right. On the eighth step, turn to the left. You know, she, she will detail everything. I mean, I tell you, and whenever she's in charge of a wedding, the wedding progresses smoothly she, to, to the detail. The dove that the bride and the groom will release, the dove will go to the direction that <laughs> Becky will tell the dove to go. I mean, she, she is incredible. I remember some time back, many, many years ago, I would sit down with Becky, you know, we'd look at her finances, and I'd say, my gosh, you're poor. <laughs> you're actually poor. And, and I, would tell, I would tell Becky, Becky, why don't you charge? You know, why don't you charge for, your, for being a wedding coordinator? By the way, she's single. So she's always been a bride coordinator, but never the bride. <laughs> and, you know, she would tell me, you know, Bo, no. I'm doing this for the love of. I just love serving my friends. So she never, not once, charged a single cent for all those hundreds of weddings that she's been coordinating with. And, but you remember what I said last week? I said that you just serve, and you just serve and develop yourself and serve, and then when you don't get rewards, guess what? God's universe will find a way to reward you. And that's what happened to my sister because for the past 10 years now, Becky and her friend Vita are running corporate seminars and God is prospering them all this time. You better believe it. What is your anointing? You might be like Becky. You might be like saying, you know, Bo, I've, I'm like Becky. I'm, I'm serving. I'm, 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 I know my anointing and I'm, I'm doing this for God. I'm doing this for others, but I'm still poor. Well, you watch out. You watch out because there will be a reward. You just keep on doing what you're supposed to do, the right thing, and be faithful to the anointing that God has given to you. And then open yourself to the wonderful opportunities that God will give to you. Our problem is that we forget about our anointing and we do something else. I was talking to a woman. Her name is, uh, we'll call her Malu. She had this clothing store in a mall small store selling clothes it was not doing well she was losing money for a year and when I talked to her she said she was gonna close it pretty soon and so I was talking to her and I said Malu did you have this any kind of experience working in a clothing store and she said no it was just my friends who told me to get into it and so I went in and I said Malu what were you doing before this store and she said, oh, I was just in the purchasing department of our company. 
And I asked her, purchasing department, you mean you were sourcing products? Yes. You were talking to suppliers? Yes. And then I said, were you good at it? And I said, yeah, 16 years in the purchasing department. And so I said, Malu, I'm going to give you a suggestion. You take it, you leave it, it's okay with me. But from an objective perspective, you have an anointing right there. And you forgot about it. I'm going to give you the suggestion. Do you know the suppliers? Of course, they're my friends. I haven't talked to them for a year, but one phone call, I'm okay. Call them up, meet them over coffee, offer yourself as a representative, a salesperson for all their suppliers. Go back to your old company, sell the products again. Go to other companies similar to your old company and start selling to all of them. You know, she, uh, she, she was listening to me. She was writing down notes. Her eyes grew larger and larger like saucers. And you know, at the end of my, of my little banter, she said, I can do this. You know, and I said, of course you can. You have an anointing for that. You know what Malu was doing? It was this. Her roots were there. You know what she was doing? She was trying to plant here. She was expecting to plant here. Her anointing was there, and that's what we do. We get distracted. Say distracted. That is your anointing. But what she did was she put up a clothing store, but you know what you had to do? You had to plant again. You had to put roots again. It's going to take time. And your learning curve will be long. And what you need to do, at least for your first business or whatever kind of thing you want to do, is focus on where the roots are. You know what God is doing? God wants to do something in your life and He has given you that anointing. And so believe that you have that. You know what I'm saying? Am I making sense here? Tell someone beside you, tell someone beside you, grow where your roots are. You got me? That's your roots. That's what God has given to you. That's your passion. That's, that's where you're supposed to grow. That's your anointing. Now you're going to ask me this question. Brother Bo, how? How will I grow my anointing? Do you want to prosper? Yes. Do you want to grow your wealth? Yes. Then you've got to grow your anointing. And the question is how? May I share with you how? I will give you my rule in growing my anointing. I have only one rule. Here it is. At least one rule I'd like to share with you now. Outside my circle of anointing, I'm very cautious. I'm a coward. I'm a chicken. But within, inside my circle of anointing, I'm fearless. I'm lion-hearted. I take risks. I do things I've never done before within my circle of anointing. I operate there, and I'm brave, and I do new things. And here's why. Ask me why. Because growth has a geographical location. Growth is located just outside your comfort zone within the circle of your anointing. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I've been anointed by God to communicate. Yes? 30 years. One way of communicating is by speaking. I've been speaking for 30 years. How did it grow? It grew by pushing myself over my comfort zone. That's the only way. Growth is found there when you get out of that comfort zone. Through these years, I remember the first time, you know, I, when, I, when, when I preached at the early part, started 13 years old, I would only preach, only to religious groups, only to prayer groups. That was my comfort zone. I loved it there. It was so nice being there. People were so happy in prayer groups. You know, you, you, you stand up there and when you don't know what to say, you just say, praise the Lord, and everybody will clap their hand. <laughs> it's true, you know. You, you forgot your next line and you say, amen. Everybody says, amen. You know, and it, it's fun and, and it, it's easy. But then one day, I was invited to speak in a company and I was so scared. At that time, I was still an undergrad and I was saying, you know, I even left college and I said, you know, 
what, what will I say to those guys? They've finished college. They're working. They're, they wear neckties. I mean, what will I do? You know? And I just said, oh, let me just stay with the prayer groups. It's so easy, you know? Imagine before you talk, they sing, Ang buhay ng Cristiano ay masayang tunay. Hey, right? Oh, isn't it what a wonderful audience, you know? Lula, 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 le, lula, lula, lula. You know, if you are able to sing silly songs like that, you, 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 you have one, a wonderful, happy audience. You know, you could bomb right in front of them and they'll still clap their hands. But I knew, I knew God was pushing me out of my comfort zone. This happened about 20 years ago. I went into that company. I remember that day. I was so nervous. My gosh. <laughs> Crazy thing. They put a lapel mic on my shirt. I think it was put on wrongly, you know, pointing, pointing towards my chest area. And from the audio system, you could, <laughs> you could hear it from the... <laughs> uh, anyway, I did it. But you know, of course you understand this, that today I, I can speak to companies, company presidents, you know, chairmen of the board, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Why? Because once upon a time, I went out of my comfort zone. Because everything that you want is just found outside your comfort zone. Everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Marriage, blessing, family growth, emotional health, physical health, financial growth. Everything is found just outside your comfort zone. The other time I got scared, really scared, 20 years ago, I was invited to speak and give a recollection to priests. Oh yes, the night before, I had acid churning in my stomach. I couldn't sleep. G give a talk to priests. I remember, I, I, you know, on that morning, I woke up and I said, I'm going to tell them four things, just four things. Number one, good morning, fathers. Number two, everything I know, you already know. Everything I say, you already know. So, let's just pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Goodbye. Sit down. But I did it. I went there. I gave my talk. Today, I routinely preach to priests and bishops effortlessly. Why? Because I've broken out of my comfort zone. Do you want to grow? Yes. Any kind of growth, it's found outside your comfort zone, within your circle of anointing. God did not tell me, go and dance, go and cook a dish. You know, God focused me on my anointing but keep on breaking the limits everybody say limits yes. the limits that are self-imposed who told who said you cannot go beyond that barrier who said you can only earn this much who said you can only work in that way no god says i want you know what god was doing he was prospering me god was moving me up another level god was giving me abundance god was saying you can be bigger i will expand the territories of your life. Another sharing, and this is my last one, is I, I have an anointing for writing. And this just happened last week. I wanted to write a book in five days. Now, I know that there are some authors who write their book for one year. I usually take about one month to three months to write a book. But last Monday, I told myself, I'm going to write a book in five days days I know I said to myself I can do this you know I'm, I, it's not comfortable I've never done this before and just moving out of my comfort zone the reason why I was confident I can do it because I've been growing as a writer I, I write uh, with, with better ideas ideas flow much quicker I you know and I, I just knew it I, I could do it it's, the problem was Monday morning came and I said to myself oh no I had to prepare these manuals for the next teaching series you know for the feast uh, overcome that's the title and and I had to prepare the manuals for the caring groups I had to prepare the Bible studies for all the talks I had to prepare the 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 uh, you know bulletins and so on so I did it for two days and I had a problem Wednesday morning I said I have three more days to write my book and I didn't know what to do you know 
I'm saying, should I do it? Should I not? Will I try? And then I received an email from our editor, my editor, Riza Sing Son Kao Feng. And she, she said, Bo, when are you going to give me your book? We need to edit it, lay out it, and publish it by Easter. And I was staring at her email, and I poised my fingers on the keyboard, and I said, Saturday, Saturday morning, sent the email. And you know what? I received an email back from Riza. Great! She did not know that at that particular time, I have not written a single word of that book. <laughs> I started writing Wednesday morning. By Friday evening, I finished writing the book. And don't clap yet. Not yet, not yet. Do you know that during those three days, I still had time to play with the kids. I still had time with my wife. I still had time with my health mentor the whole Friday morning, just talking with him. And, and I, I still slept six hours a day, you know, but I finished my book. And it, it was just that exhilaration of knowing, yes. And I looked at my book and I said, my gosh, this is so much better than all my other books. You know? And it's, it's just an amazing thing that when, what was God doing? I've experienced it in my life. God puts you to another level. God says, okay, it's time to grow. Okay, it's time to expand your territories. Why? I want you to bless more people. Why? I want you to prosper more. I'd like to say this, that God has anointed you. God has anointed you. You were born for greatness. You really were. Deep within you is a great person. Deep within you is a successful person waiting to be manifest. You have an anointing ready to release to the world.